Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Um, when I was looking through my collection, um, having just recently filmed the um, overview of my Outremer um, models, I realised that actually I've not painted that many um, models that fit into the sort of like Crusader states, so the Europeans, um, Crusading Europeans. So I thought actually instead what I'd do is probably just show you a bit of an overview of my favourite models that I've got from the sort of like the the Western factions um, that I've painted so far. Uh, so this is more really an overview of my favourite models from the Baron's Wall range that I've painted, um, including a couple that fit into the Crusader um, retinues. So what I'll do is I've got a selection out here. Um, I'll take you through them, show you what they're like and then tell you why I like them. So hopefully you enjoy this video and it's, uh, you know, not a complete waste of time. So let's uh, start off. So let's start off with a couple of the first models I painted when I first got uh, into the Baron's War. So these are a couple of uh, models I use regularly as part of my command group. So you've got uh, the Bishop Peter de Roche, who was the Bishop of Winchester. Um, very interesting character who was involved in the Regency for King Henry III um, after um, King John died um, and I think he even went on crusade at some point and yeah really interesting guy um, pretty beefy profile but I don't often use the Peter de Roche profile I use uh, sort of like a, a normal Baron or whatever um, this is the standard bearer I've printed this flag on um, my just a regular inkjet printer. Um, that's the coat of arms of the uh, Bishop of Winchester. So overall, yeah, really nice set of models. Um, they have just released this guy as a mounted version, um, the Bishop. So I will be getting that at some point, um, and I'll be adding him to my collection as well. But really, really nice model. Moving on next, we've got these two guys. Now, I can't remember where these came from, interestingly. I think they were free figures. Well, they were free figures, sorry, I should say. Um, when you, um, I think when you pre-ordered something for the Outremer expansion or when you spent a certain amount of money on the Outremer stuff. But they're um, essentially settled Franks. So these are Crusaders who've moved to the Holy Land and settled. Um, for some reason, I got two, so I decided to paint them up slightly differently. Zoom a little bit more for you. Um, so you've got one here with a round shield wearing sort of like a beige white with a red headdress with a sort of like a cross on his shield. Both got relatively old style um, helms, nasal helms. And then this one I've gone for sort of like a more of a light blue, um, which if you've seen my previous video, that is similar to what I've done for my, um, my Muslims, but I thought it's quite a nice um, kind of light look. And then he's got a kite shield, or a triangular kite shield, with a cross. Painted the cross freehand, so I'm quite chuffed with that. But again, these two are very nice. Um, I use them really just as sort of like extra knights um, to go in the commander's retinue, or if I've got a group of knights. But they work very nicely. So, following on from them, a couple of other models I've got. So... I believe this was one of the free figures that came when you spent over £40. I think it's Falks the Brute, I think, who was a commander on the Royalist side, I think, fighting in the Baron's War. Yeah, so he was a mercenary commander who served King John and then also served um, Henry III in the Baron's War. So, nice model, but I decided to paint him more as a sort of like a, a Crusader style figure. Um, I might get another one because there is a mounted version of him which is quite cool. But, really enjoyed painting that one. This here is actually one of the um, Saga models from um, Stronghold Terrain. So this isn't a footsaw model, but I saw it and I looked at it and I thought, you know what? He would work, and I think he's meant to be some sort of Irish bishop or Irish saint or something like that. But I thought he would work perfectly for a crusader army being led by some sort of like, you know, religious nut job. So I picked him up. Um, it actually, it delayed my order because I had to wait for this to be shipped from Germany. Um, 
it's a lovely, lovely model. I'm really proud of the job I've done, as you see there. I'm really proud of the face, the paint job I've done on the face. Really happy with that. He's just a nice miniature, so he can go in as a sort of like a priest upgrade. Instead of the monk, which I've got. And the monk is also one of my favourites. Um, so yeah, he's just a nice little addition to the retinue to make it look all a bit more interesting. Now we can start to move on to some of the more beefy boys. So, next up we've got a bishop style figure that I've painted. So I think that the mounted version is released as Stephen Langton, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury, I think. Um, the foot version was one that you got, again, another free model that you got when you spent a certain amount of money or when you bought a certain amount of stuff to go with Outremer. But I thought, you know what? These both look pretty cool. Um, the heraldry is something I've made up. So they've got a fleur de lis on there, which is sort of like quite close to the, you know, the French royal um, heraldry. But I thought, you know what? I, I saw a video on YouTube by a guy called the Bretonian Army Painter. And he paints a lot of sort of like old world Warhammer stuff. And he did a video on painting a heraldry. And one of the things he painted was a fleur de lis. And he made it look so simple. I thought to myself, you know what? I want to try that. So I tried out on this guy. And it worked. But, I mean, I had to paint it, what's that? Three times on the mounted figure. Once on here. Getting them to match was a bit of a pain. But I think it's worth it. And it looks good. Again, a light blue, so very similar to the um, Crusader I painted. And then also very similar to my um, my Mounted Muslims. But you know what? I think they look cool. They look they look good. So I'm happy with it. Just noticed a bit of a chip on his uh, mitre as well, on his bishop hat. So I need to touch that up a bit. So next up, we've got... This guy, who is a herald, um, this is one of the more recent ones I've painted. So, again, trying a little bit different uh, with the weathering, trying to make it look a bit heavier on the dirt on the uh, horses' um, caparison. But again, a really nice figure. Painted it in quite a generic way because heralds, I suppose, are. I think I think they actually had quite fancy dress but i wanted to be able to use this as a sort of like a, a, a musician as well so the trumpeter command upgrade i've just got the mounted version they have just released the foot version for this they've released it sorry i should say um so i want to get that eventually to be able to complement this one um so moving on from there we've got this guy i cannot remember his name it's gonna bug me but he's on the Futsal website, and he's the Templar Master of England. Um, I think it's a very French name, but I can't remember his name exactly. But again, try to do something a bit different here with the weathering on the bottom of the uh, horses' cloths there. Try to make it a bit heavier, make it look like they've been trudging through some dirt. But again, very, quite an easy model to paint, really, because there's so much fabric and so much cloth. Um, that really you can just I mostly just dry brush this but really like how it looks very happy with the face in there very happy with the free hand on the cross so yeah quite a nice model so moving on next we've got some knights that I've done so we've got a couple here of knights armed with hand weapons again free hand on the heraldry um, and also, I should note that for the majority of these, I've not painted them as characters. Because as much as I would love to sit there and say, this is so-and-so, I either, for one, don't feel confident enough to paint their heraldry, or two, don't really want to have to sit and wait for a transfer, or try to make a transfer for it. So I've gone relatively generic, you see. Red and yellow, black and white, just keeping it as generic as I can. But again, really nice models. Um, the majority of what you're painting is the, the colour, like the base colour for the horse and for the um, circo anyway. So it is relatively easy once you get going on a roll with those. Um, next up, a couple more knights, this time armed with lances. 
again didn't really know what to go for heraldry wise with these so I, I made it up myself um, so we kind of got the blue guy there with the um, simplified crown and then you've got the white guy the red guy sorry with the um, the cross and the sort of cross hatching the checkered picnic pancake style but again really happy with how they turned out and these are lovely models i have got some um mountain knights from fireforge games um, they're the plastic ones and i've got to be honest although i did have some miscasts on these um one of the helmets the great helms was miscast um they still feel and look more natural than fireforge ones which are much they look a lot more fantasy style but both lovely models but personally i prefer these myself so the pièce de résistance by no means leaving the best for last one that i've done recently and who for anyone who's interested in the period he is the essentially the main man um beyond king john or richard the lionheart or even you know um Prince Louis or uh, Henry III, he's pretty much the main character in the Baron's War tale. It's William Marshall. So he served kings, I say kings multiple, because there was Henry the Young King, Henry the Second, then there was John, Richard, then John, then Henry the Third, and he served them all um, to the point where he eventually was served as regent for Henry III after the death of King John. So he's a pretty major character in this. Um, lots of books written about him, really interesting stuff. But I thought I need to have this figure in my collection. Um, and if I never have to paint a freehand red lion again, I will be very happy because this was a bit of a pain to paint. I practiced it a couple of times. Um, and I think it's come out all right. In fact, I've done a bit on the surcoat there to try and make it look like it's on there too. But I do not want to have to paint one of these again. So I will probably be buying the banner for this that you can print or that you, comes printed and you can just sort of stick it onto a bit of paper. Um, but lovely models, really. I'm very... Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Very happy with the facial... Where I've painted the faces come out quite nicely. Put one as well. Big old bushy eyebrows. So it's very nice. But yeah, so this is a sort of like a brief overview of my favourite models. Um, I've got one more to go, which I didn't show you earlier. So this is a bit of a sort of like a you know ruby prize for anyone who's managed to wait this long. So this is a model, again, that when I ordered it caused a bit of delay to my order because these are printed for Footsore. So this is their armoured tax car. And I saw this and I thought, you know what, it just looks really cool. And I have used it in a game, only it wasn't a game of Baron's War, it was a game of Middle Earth strategy battle game. We were playing battle companies and this formed sort of like one of the... Uh, one of the units that needed to be um, escorted from one place to another. Um, needless to say, I failed and it. All the crew were slaughtered and everyone who was being transported was slaughtered as well. But you can use it for similar sorts of things in this game. So if you like, like the death and taxes, Robin Hood style scenario, you can have this guy trundling through a forest and then getting ambushed by Robin Hood and his merry men. So it's really nice. Um, it's a 3D printed wagon. So it's printed in resin. Um, you get a strong box with it, a chest, and yeah, you can see, if you turn it flip on that way, you can see the, uh, for anyone who's into 3D printing, you can see the support marks on the bottom there. But it does come out really nicely. Um, there was very, very little cleanup that I needed to do. It was all well cured. There were a few supports that just needed to be snipped off. Um, but overall, you can see sort of like some of the support marks there, the little pop marks. But overall, it's very nice. It's very sturdy, which for a resin kit is great because sometimes bits like this can be a bit, bit weak. 
but yeah it's a really nice kit i've added the crossbeam here i've added in some thread to use as reins um it comes with a crew like a guy sitting with a crossbow and the driver very nice i did change the horses because the horses that come with it from footsore are really small like really skinny they look really quite malnourished whereas these, these look like they could pull a uh, cart which has a chest full of gold so yeah i've added it onto this base so that you can use it either as sort of like a model like that or you can take it off and use it like that depending on how you're playing i just made this mod this base out of a bit of foamex and then added the uh tufts and flop as i would for a normal base so yeah really like this one it's one of my favorite models one of my favorite things in my collection i think to be honest so yeah thanks for watching i know it's been a relatively long video but hopefully it's interesting to be able to see what sort of things there are in the footsore range um there are a lot of other models um for the baron's war that i don't own yet but sure as uh sure as you can bet i will definitely be getting my hands on a lot more of them they're really fun to paint um i can't say much more about it i enjoy painting them they're great fun so thanks for watching um hope you like it if you do please like you know subscribe or like the video or share it whatever you want to do and uh i'll see you in the next video thank you bye